With the help of Hashem, we are learning Sukkah Daf Lamed. We will start on Daf Chavtes Amid Beis, beginning the third chapter of Masech to Sukkah. So the first and second chapters, we're speaking about the mitzvah of sitting in the Sukkah and the details of how to construct the Sukkah, etc., etc. And now we are beginning to learn about the mitzvah of the Arba'a Minim, about the four species. I would like to begin by quoting the Pasuk that we have in Parshas Emor. That's Vayikra Chav Gimel, Pedek, Pasuk Mem. It says, Vayolakachtem Lochem Bayem Arishin. God Almighty says that we should take Lochem, that will be a key word, take for yourselves, on the first day of Yom Tif. Priyets Adar, a fruit of a beautiful tree. And as we will see, this is referring to the Esrik. Kapois, Tamarim, a branch of a date palm, as we know this is referring to the lulav, the anaf eats ovois, and a shoot of a plated tree. Plated meaning that from one bud comes out, not two leaves, but from one bud comes out three leaves. That is what we call the hadas, the arve nochel, and a brook willow, what we call the arava. And we should rejoice in front of Hashem Aleichem when shivas yomim for seven days. So, Kaidim Kol, this Pasuk is referring to the mitzvah of the Arba Minim. And the Torah writes that we should take it on the first day. And indeed, Middo Oiraisa, in the world, outside of the place of the Beis Amikdash, the mitzvah of taking the Arba Minim is only on the first day. However, since the Pasuk writes at the end that Usemachtim Lefnei Hashem Alekechem Shivas Yomim, Say Chazal, what God is also telling us that Lifnei Hashem Aleikechem, meaning in, fr- in the Beis Hamikdash, in front of the presence of Hashem, there the mitzvah is to take it for seven days. However, Bechur Ben Beis Hamikdash, from the many takanas that were made, also we had this takana that throughout the world, for all of the seven days, the lulav should be taken. Parenthetically, not on Shabbos. Why? Zecher to how it's done in the Beis Hamikdash, but it's important to begin our Pedic by remembering that biblically, outside the Beis Hamikdash, the Ulakachtem Lochem is by Yoim Harishain. And by the way, we're going to learn Dinim that's connected to the Lochem. The Lochem, the qualification that it must be yours, is only by Yoim Harishain. That which is not permitted, or some of what's not permitted on the first day, will be permitted for the second day onward. And, and the Mishnah will give us many dinim focusing specifically on, about, about the Lulav. Now, the first, the, the, the name of the Pedic is Lulav HaGazel. The issue of a stolen Lulav is, as we'll see, twofold. Number one, it's not Lochem. But don't, rem- don't forget that the qualification of Lochem is only for the first day. There are certain things that may not be on the first day, but may be for the rest. However, there's another issue with the stolen lulav, and that's going to be the big topic of today, the flamid, the topic, the mitzvah, the concept of mitzvah hababa veda. That if a person is performing a mitzvah, but it only came through them transgressing. So not only do we have an explicit pusik that this, this allows an animal that was stolen to be used for a carbon, we will apply that to any mitzvah and to all the mitzvahs. That a mitzvah cannot come about through, through a sin, even without the qualification of lachem. But yes, we have the concept of mitzvah haba ba'aveda. And because of that, we're going to learn about the concept, the topic. Really, it's a sugyan bavakama that karka ain't an exalus. Land halachically cannot be stolen. The talpalin could be stolen. And the big question will be, if, God forbid, a movable is stolen, so you have different levels, you have different steps that that thing might undergo. Well, number one is it's stolen. But even after something is stolen, it still belongs to the original owner. So let's say the gazlin doesn't own it, it's not lochem. But what happens if the original owner had yeush or yeush, which means he abandoned that item. He abandoned hope that he'll ever get it back. So we, we, we have in Bava Kama, and we're going to have over here a very important machloik is here. It's not written explicit, but we'll understand that throughout the sugya. Some opinions hold that just Yush itself will affect a change of ownership. And the Gazlin here will own it. So it is Lochem. It's a mitzvah, but it's Lochem. 
Others opine that just Yush is not enough to have a change of ownership. There has to be Yush and something else. Now, the something else can be Shinoi Rishus, a change of jurisdiction. It can be a Shinoi Maisa, a physical change in the item. It can be a Shinoi Hashem and many other things, as we'll learn throughout the Sugya. But this entire topic will be very much connected to how to understand and when to apply the first rule in the Mishnah. But let's hit it, let's go right inside. This is a phenomenal daf. And indeed, the first din in the Mishnah is that lulav hagazel, that a stolen lulav, as we'll see, is invalid. But the Mishnah adds, and bahayavish, a dry lulav. Now, for the sake of clarity, we're focusing on a lulav. Let's divide the lulav into three parts. You have the shidra, the spine. So if you're holding the lulav the right way, you have that dark, green, thick spine that goes throughout the entire lulav, out of which comes the all in the branches. And then there is what we call in halacha the tioimus, the twin leaf of the lulav. Now really, all of the leaves are twinned, are doubled. But we're going to follow the many who apply the tioimus of chazal in reference dafke to the top a leaf to the leaf that goes out of the spine upwards and it becomes the tip of the lulav. Okay, so when the Mishnah is speaking about a dried lulav, let's first clarify what is dry, either the majority of the leaves or the spine. And dry, how do you define dry? So in Tavshin Pei Alef, Right in this last moment of Golos, the Gashmias of all the mitzvahs are mamish beautiful. So well, yeah, we would not use a lula from one year to the other, but it doesn't necessarily mean that next year my current lula will halachically be called dry. For sure, our grandparents in Russia or in the other areas where it was not always a, a given that you're going to get the Arba Minim, so people saved what they could. Many people would save a lula from one year to the other. How do you define dry? Many people say dry is so dry that if you scratch it with your fingernail, it crumbles. And there are other halachic definitions, be that as it may. So, lulav, the first clause, if it's stolen through gzela, through robbery, or if it's dry, it, it is puzzle. A fundamental machloikas, rashi and toises that we will need to learn the Gemara. So look inside, look inside Yavesh, the, the Rashi writes, what's wrong with it being dry? The Be'inan Mitzvah Mehuderes, because the Mitzvah has to be beautified. Why? This is so important, because it says, and Rashi is quoting from, the Shiraz Hayam Ve'anveyu, Zekeli Ve'anveyu, this is my God and I will beautify him. Guys, this word Ve'anveyu is not related exclusively to the Arba Minim Bechlamat. It's a general concept that mitzvahs have to be beautiful. And also including the Lulav. Look inside the top Toisves who disagrees with Rashi. So Lulav, Yavesh, Pasol, Mefarish, Bigemare, not like Rashi because we do compare. We make a Hekesh between Lulav and an Esreg and regarding Esreg it says Hadar. So the Din of Hadar isn't only for the Esreg, it's also for the Lulav. And because it comes from Zekei And the, the proof that Toysfus has is because Zekei is a din of Lechatchila. It's not a din of Bidiyevet. And in our Mishnah, it's essential. If the Lulav is Yavish, it's after the fact also possible. But we're going to learn Gemara Rashi, but let's remember that Rashi understands that the Psul of Yavesh is Zekei Livyan Veu. Evidently, Rashi holds that it's not necessarily always true that Zekei Livyan Veu is only a din of Lechatchila. But let's go right. Next clause in the Mishnah. Shalashera v'shalir anidachas. A lulav that comes from a tree, a palm tree, that was planted for it to be worshipped as an idol. And there's a name for that. That's called a Asheda tree. And there's a mitzvah to burn that tree. Similarly, if you have a Irani Dachas, if you have a city, that from the city came people that somehow convinced the majority, or all, or all of the inhabitants to worship Avodah Zarah, God forbid. In many circumstances, that not only are the people of the city put to death, but all of the belongings have to be burnt. And as we'll learn later in the Flamid Beis, the concept that we have, in halacha, that when something has to be burnt, it's viewed as if it's already burnt. And any mitzvah that needs a minimum size, if there's a shear connected to a mitzvah, like we have in this Mishnah regarding a lulav, it has to be at least four tfachim, as we'll see in a moment. So the words of Chazal is, is katusei michatas shiurei. 
that it's as if the shear is pulverized, it lacks the minimum shear, and therefore puzzle. Next in the Mishnah, Niktam Roishai, if the top was clipped off, and here we have the big machlekas, what top are we talking about? It's very relevant. The rush holds, I'm sorry, the rivet holds that the top of the lulav means the spinal cord. Very lenient. But if what we called the tiyoimis or or and other leaves above the spine, that's not called the niktam roishai. Many other rishayim don't agree with that. The, the most chamur, the kashit is the sheet of daran that holds that niktam roishai can only be referring to the tiyoimis. That if only the leaf that goes to the top, if that was clipped off, that in itself invalidates the lulav. Or nifrit sualav, if its leaves were torn. Now, if they were torn, they're there because they were sewed on, and that's the way people made brooms. And many people actually would use what we would call a lulav. But since they're torn off, it's not possible, it's invalid. However, nifrit dualav, if the leaves are only separated, it's attached. Like Rashi explains, as the lulav grows, if you don't harvest it at the right time, the leaves begin to open. So even if they are fully opened, now we have to add another nuance. After a while, they don't only open, but they become so hard that even with effort, you can bring it back to the way it was when it was what we call a lulav. Here, the Tana is speaking about a case where the leaves were separated, but it's not hard enough you are, you are able to bend it back. The Tanakama holds you don't need to bend it back and tie it, but there is the ability to do so. So it's going to be kosher. Rabbi Yehuda holds, okay, Moida, that if nifr to alav, it's going to be kosher, but not only because potentially you can, so to say, bend it back and tie it, but you have to do that to make it kosher. That yagideno mil milmailo, you have to tie it together, but you have to tie it together at the top, it was you have to bring back the lulav to the way we know a lulav of being completely closed. It's it, it just a straight, a straight, beautiful, uh, a, horiz- a, a straight a vertical uh, sword. And actually, as Chazal will tell us, that the Torah uses the words kapois to modern, right? Palm branches. But if you can take the same letters and just change the vowels, and you can read it kafus, which is what Rabbi Yehuda does. Kafus means it has to be bound. Furthermore, says the Mishnah, tzinei har barzel, the palms of har habarzel, har habarzel is a certain region in Eretz Yisrael. And over there, the leaves, the branches are short. So, so, so the leaves don't match the length the length of the spine, again, says the Mishnah, they are, nevertheless, that lulav is, is kesheders. The final halach in the Mishnah, that lulav, sheyesh boy shloisha tfachim. you have to know how to read it, as we'll learn in the Gemara. A lulav that has the length of three tfachim, and as we'll see, that means that the spine has the length of three tfachim, which means that the leaves that grow above it makes the lulav even longer, how much longer? Leaving the additional tefach, total of four tefachim, for you to be able to do na'anuyim, and we'll leave this for daflamid base, but na'anuyim, the waving or the shaking of the lulav is something very much connected with the kashrus of the lulav. Even though if a person, halacha lemaisa, if they did the mitzvah by putting them together, they fulfilled their obligation. But there is a unique link between the mitzvah of na'anuyim, and na'anuyim means waving, and the lulav has to be big enough. Again, as we'll see, it's not three tfachim, but it really means, it really means three tfachim of spine, plus another tefach of leaves for you to be able to wave it, and, we'll, and then it's kosher. Lachatchila, it doesn't have to be bigger than that. Okay, so we're going to learn the whole daf today is going to be focused on the lula of Haggazel. So says the Gemara Katka Pasik Vatani. When we're speaking about a stolen lula, the first the lula, the, the Gazel and Yavish. Pasel, loy shana b'yom rishon, v'loy shana b'yom tavsheni. Doesn't make a difference whether we're speaking about the first day. Yom tavsheni doesn't mean the second day. It means the second day onwards, the Mishnah made a categorical statement. Now comes Akasha, Bishlami Yavesh, the Psul of Yavesh. I understand why that's an invalidation 
categorical for all of the seven days, because since Hadar be Inon, and let's Dafka follow Rashi, not not Hadar. Zekei Livian Veu is not connected specifically to the mitzvah of the Arba Minim. And again, let's not forget that biblically, the obligation outside the Beis Hamikdash is only by Yom Arishan. Zekei Livian Veu was connected to all mitzvahs. So even when the taking of the Arba Minim is only Midr Abanon, so what? You're doing a mitzvah. A mitzvah has to have a minimum amount of beauty. So if it's completely dried out, it's lacking in this Hidur of the Anvehu. Obviously, I'm trying to imply that Toysvah will have a difficulty in learning the Gemara. But let's go weiter. So that's good. But the Kasha is Gazul. Again, the Mishnah makes a categorical statement. Mashma, that the Psul of Gezela is not only on the first day, but for all of the seven days. So, Frag the Gemara, Bish, Loima, Yom Tov, Rishon. I understand why if it's Gazul, it's invalid, because since it says, Lokachtem, Lochem, this is all based on the premise that if it's stolen, it's not even yours. So it's not yours. So it's not good. Mishalachem. However, Elabiyam Tavsheni Amailoi. What's the issue from the second day onwards? And as we'll talk to learn that the Lochem, we just had this in the previous Padik, doesn't even allow you to use a borrowed Arba Minim. And that is not true from the second day on. Because whatever is learned from the Lachem is only applicable And true, the Chacham made a Takana, but they didn't make it like the first day. So what's the problem with Gazel, second day onwards? So let's begin. So, in the name of the Rashbi, now finally we're coming to today's Daf Daf Lamid, that you, you learned correct. The mitzvah is giving you a categorical psal for all of the seven days. But the problem with Gazel is not because it's not Lochem. Mishum da Havalei Mitzvah Baba Veira Givaldik. Since you, you are trying to perform a mitzvah, but you only have it because you transgressed stealing. Can't use it for a mitzvah. Now, where do we learn that? That a mitzvah haba Baba is not good? So, this is based on a Pasuk in Malachi. What does it say over there? That Pasuk is speaking about Karbanois, to which we're comparing all the mitzvahs. And God Almighty is saying that Vahavesem, Guzzle, that you think that you're going to bring a stolen animal, or the Eshapiseyach, a lame animal, or the Eshachoyle, a sick animal. God says, What you think I'll accept it from you? So the, the Pasuk is juxtaposing and comparing Gezela to lame, to Piseyach. Indeed, Guzzle, Dumet de Piseyach. Piseach is not referring to some, some sort of temporary blemish. Piseach is lame. One leg is bigger than the other. So, ma piseach les le takanto. Piseach means the animal has a blemish which cannot be remedied. So, guzzle doesn't have a remedy. Now, what do we mean by that? So, let's go back. After gazela, before yush, it doesn't belong to you. If the problem of gazela is only because it's not yours... When what will happen if the owner now will abandon hope of ever getting it back? And our Rashbi is going to follow the shita that holds that Yush allows the Gazlan, the new one in possession, to acquire it, to own it, even without anything else. Now, of course, the Gazlan has to repay that which he stole. He's going to owe its value. And if it was Geneva, he's going to have to pay back double. But the item itself belongs halachically to the Gazel. So if Yiyush would affect the change, then Gezela, if the problem of Gezela is only because it's not yours, so then Gezela would only be a temporary problem. But the trader does juxtapose it to Piseach to tell you that no matter when, you can't use Gazel for a carbon. Av Gazel leis leitakanta, meaning loishna lithna Yiyush, and again, note that the only thing that's relevant here is Yiyush, and loishna laacha Yiyush. And now, Berashbi, now let's conclude this limut. Now, Bish, Lefna Yush. I understand why God doesn't accept the Pasuk is speaking about a carbon, because the Parsha of Karban is in Vayikra begins with the words, Adam Kiyakrev, Mi Kem. Right, that's the Lakute Torah. Not Adam Mi Kem Kiyakrev, but Adam Kiyakrev, Mi Kem. The Pneumius is, is that man's getting close to God has to be Mi Kem. But here, what we're learning is, is that that which you bring from a carbon has to belong to you. That's the Mikem over here, Alpi Nigla. So if there wasn't Yush, so therefore, Valavdi Dehu, I get it. So God says, you think I'll accept it. But Laachar Yush, it's a terrible thing that he stole. 
and he has to compensate the owner by giving back the owner the value if it was a gazelle, if it was a geneva, pay back this and kefal, v'chulei, but hokanya biyesh, the owner already, the, the, the current gazlan, the current possessor, acquired it halachically because of the original owner's yish, abandonment. And yet, the, the Pasuk writes, God says, you think I'll accept it? What's the problem with it? I'll tell you the problem. The problem is, is that it came to his possession through a transgression. And that's the source, El Olav, Mishum Dahave, Mitzvah Ba Ba Veira, and our Chazal, and our Sugya is comparing Mitzvahs to Karbanais. Moiridik. Okay. Now, let's just quickly read inside the top Toysvahs. Let's go to the beginning. Mishum Dahave, Le Mitzvah Ba Ba Veira. Asks, Asks the Gemara, we, we're going to learn soon, we're going to learn in the next Pedic, Lulav and Arava, and Daf Mem Gimel, that Lochem, Misha Lochem, Lohoitzi Es Hashol, the Es HaGazel. Why do we need that? So really, says, says Toysvis, that now that we established that a mitzvah habob veda cannot be used for a mitzvah, really, the lochem that Chazal is quoting is mainly for the Shaul. Because just to teach you that a guzzle is not good, we don't need the lochem. We're going to learn that from this general rule concerning all of the mitzvahs, and that is that a mitzvah, a baba veda, is not a valid, is not a valid mitzvah. Okay, let's go right. Now the Gemara says, Ve'omar Rabbi Yechanan, Mishum Rashim Ba'yechoi. My dechsev, what's the meaning of the pasuk? Kani Hashem Oyev Mishpat. I, God Almighty, I love justice. And soy ne gazel be'oila. I hate robbery in a carbon oila. What's this connection between robbery and a carbon oila? Mashul Melech Basar Vadam. Shoy Oyver Lifnei Bed Lif. Shoy Oyver Al Beis Ameches. Imagine that there was a king that's passing through a a a place, a, a toll booth, where whoever passes has to leave money for the government for the king. So Amal Avadav, so as the king's carriage is going by there, he tells his chevra, he tells his driver, oh, stop and pay tax. Tenu mechas la Go, go pay the, the tax to the tax collectors. So Amr so his, his entourage, tell the king, I don't understand. The whole tax is for you. Amr Uloi, kola mechas kule shalchai. So why would you pay it? So Amr Uloi, to which he responded, because mi menu yilmadu kolay vidirachim. I want to be a good role model. In other words, when people will see that I'll, I'm leading by example, that I'm paying the tax, no one will figure out a way how to circumvent and not pay that toll booth. So the same thing is using this for the following. From all of the things that we give to God, we can argue what is totally God's a carbon oil. None of it is used by us. None of the animal is used by us. Now, from God's perspective, Lashem Ha'aretz Umaloya. So maybe one would think, if I'm giving the carbon only to God, He's the only recipient, so to say, what difference does it make if I'm giving it from mine, if I'm giving it from yours? From God's perspective, it's not mine, it's not yours, it's all His. God tells me, don't steal. You want to bring a carbon oil from yours. Af Hakadosh Baruch Hu Amar Ani Hashem Soyne Goizel even Ba'oila. But again, not only by Oila, but by all the Karbanos. Not only by all the Karbanos, but really by all the mitzvahs. And now the Gemara says, so the the chiddush here is, is that we 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 accepted the premise of the Kasha. and that is is that the Mishnah's categorical statement that Lulav Hagozul is pasul is for all the days. And it manami, Omar of Ami, Yavesh, Pasul, for all the seven days. Because it's not a Hodor, Larashi, Lotoisus, we're learning Rashi. It's not Zekhele Vian Veyu. Gazul, Pasul, Mishum da have a mitzvah, Baba Veyu. And that is, that indeed is not connected, not to the first day, not to the second day onwards. It's connected to any time. You're doing a mitzvah, it cannot be through the transgression, in our case, of stealing. However, Rabbi Yitzchak, Rabbi Yitzchak understood the pshat in the Mishnah differently. To Amar Rabbi Yitzchak Banachmeni in the name of Shmuel, Loi Shanu El Beyom Tevri Shoyin that the Mishnah's ruling that a, that a lulav that stolen is possible is only Dafk on the first day. Avul Beyom Tev Sheni, and as we said, the Lochem is only Berishoyin even after the Chachamim said, you know what, take the Arba Minim for all of the days. 
but all of the rules of the first did not carry over to the remaining. And therefore, for example, a borrowed lulav, which won't be valid for the first day, will be valid for the subsequent days. So, avol biyam tavsheinim, just like a person will fulfill his, their obligation, even though they don't own it on the level of Lechem that's demanded for the first day, is Yoytse Nami, wow, Gewalt, Yoytse Nami, Now, now, look inside just quick, the last Toysvis in the Amid, Yoytse Begazel, Hoche Dafke, Shuhum in Abanon, Lechayesh, a Mitzvah Baba Aveda. He's making a good point. There is a problem with Mitzvah Baba Aveda. So, the pshat of Rabbi Yitzchak is, is that you're right. If and when there is a biblical obligation, he also subscribes that a mitzvah, a baba veda, will not allow you to fulfill your obligation. But yeah, dafka, because second day onwards, the mitzvah is only midr even though it's a mitzvah, a baba veda, it will not invalidate your rabbinic fulfillment. And indeed, the Mishnah was only speaking about only speaking about the first day, and that's a huge machlaikas between these two Amairoi. Okay, and now the Gemara is going to challenge the understanding, Rabbi Yitzchak's understanding in the Mishnah. the Gemara Mosiv, Rav Nachman by Yitzchak, against Rabbi Yitzchak, right? Says in our Mishnah, Lulav HaGazel Vayovish Pasel. Now what do we correctly infer? Ha Shaul is Kasher. One second, Amos. If our Mishnah is only speaking about the Yontav Rishon, that can't be. Because then even Shoal is not valid. Hoksiv Lachem, which means Misha Lachem. And if it's borrowed, it's not yours on the level that it's Taka yours. Hai Lav Didehu. So when the Mishnah, which is really saying in between the lines that Shoal is okay, what's not okay is only if it's Mamish stolen. So the Mishnah must be speaking about Biyoyim Toiv Sheni, meaning second day onwards. And yet on that, the Mishnah writes Puzzle. Gewalt. So answers the Gemara, Omar, we're going to put Omar before Rava, because he's, he's going continuing from above, that al oilam be yom tevrish. No, 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 Rabbi Yitzchak could be right. Let's go with him. And the, the problem of Gazil is only be yom tevrish. So why didn't the Mishnah mention Shoal, which is a greater novelty? No, it's not a greater novelty. Loimi boyek Omar. Loy mi boya, no, it's the Mishnah is really telling you in between the lines that it wasn't even necessary for me to tell you that a borrowed lulav is what? Is not valid the first day because it's clearly, it's not yours. Avol gazul, one might have thought, e mastam gizele yeush ba'alamu, that, that, now let's speak out. Geneva gizela. Geneva is someone who, who goes in stealth to take from the other. That means that it's, it's likely that the victim doesn't even know that he was victimized because it was stolen under the darkness of night. Gzela means you were robbed. The victim knows what's happening. So there's a much greater chance by Gzela that he's going to have a Yush. Actually, the Havamina is, is that Gzela means that there was Yush because if he couldn't stop the thief during the act, but he's going to get it back afterwards, that might be a way of thinking. And again, based on we're following, like before, this sheet in Bavakama, that only Yush is enough to make a halachic transference of ownership. And therefore, one would think that Gzela is not a contradiction to the Lochem. The way Rashi learns, no, that's the whole Kiddush of the Mishnah, that how do you know that there was Yush? I want to read, I want to read inside the Rashi, middle of the Amit. The Adish, my Inan, the Ayayish, like Kani, No, it's, the problem is, it's, it's the first day. The issue is Lochem. But there's no issue from the second day onwards with Mitzvah Baba Veda. Why didn't you mention Shaul? Of course we know Lakachtam Lachem. Shaul is not yours. It's only borrowed. But the Chiddush of the Mishnah is, is that by Gezela, don't presume that the owner gave up. The owner was unable to, to protect himself against the uh, robber. But like Lerach she says, the, the, the victim says, okay, I'm not going to lose my limb or life to stop him from taking it now, but I'll get it back. Because the Neymar Omar, the victim is saying to himself, Hashtahu the Takev Minoy, now he's stronger than me, now he got me. But Lamachar, Tefisna Leibedina, I'm going to take him to court tomorrow. 
So you don't know if there was Yush. And in other words, it still belongs to the original owner. Exactly. And since it belongs to the original owner, again, we're not using mitzvah ba ba'veda, we are using the issue of lachem, and it's lacking in the lachem. Gevaldik says, the Gemara amaluhu, Rafuna, lahanu avan kirei Rafuna, said, avan kirei means to the merchants who sold the arba minim. Oh, this is going to be amazing, that ki zavin tu asama oiv dekechavim. When you buy we're focusing here on the Hadassim. From the um, Goyim, who are selling you the Hadassim, says Rafuna to them, Loi tigzezu atun, don't cut the trees yourselves. Ela ligzuza inu. Let them, the merchants, the sellers, cut it, and then v'yohavoluchu, they will give it to you, meaning they'll sell it to you. And why did Rafuna tell them that? My Tamo. So a couple of steps over here. Step number one is that we have to presume when it comes to the observance of mitzvahs, the hadasim that are going to be used in a mitzvah, that the land from which they're taking it was lands that they took against halacha from their original owners, as happened so often in the times of Golos, that, uh, that, that the land was stolen from Eden. Now guys, understand like this. If we were to know that this land is stolen, then this is not a mitzvah hadassim related issue. But as we will see, we don't, when it comes to other areas other than mitzvahs, we don't have to assume that this is coming from stolen land. No, we can assume that the land belongs to the seller, to the merchant. But now that we're going to be using it for a mitzvah, so we have to take that into account. We have to go beyond the normal standard. Now, if the land was stolen based on the rule, Chevret, when I were going to Ahmed Beis, that what? That Karka ain't an exelus. That's the big sugi we have in Bavakama. Land halachically cannot be stolen, which means that even though what happens is, is that when you're living at a time that the, the government is not protecting Jewish property and the strong man is going to take away, God forbid, the property as happened, and the, the Yiddish owner can have technical yush, he'll abandon hope of ever getting it back. But halachically, that abandonment doesn't change anything. Now, what I'm saying is very important because when someone has their land stolen, in those circumstances, they have yush, it's that the yush is ineffective. But it's important to remember that they had yush, and therefore, the moment some of their land becomes metaltalin, which is in our case, if you have a hadassim growing from land that was stolen, the moment the hadassim are cut, they're no, it's no longer karka, it becomes metaltalin. Now the yush that the owners had, could be generations ago, will go into effect, and now this is an item that was stolen, metaltalin, that the owners had yush. And as it's clear that the Rav Huna does not subscribe to the Shittos that we learned on Ahmed Aleph, that hold that only Yush itself affects a halachic transference of ownership, according to Rav Huna, there has to be Yush and something else. And let's focus now on Shinui Rishus, which would be exactly what's happening because the merchants, well, they might be the Gazlanim, Right? I'm sorry, they, 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 yeah, the land belonged to the Yid. Now they stole it, and when they sell it to the Jews, to the Avankaris, now there is Yush and Shinu Rishus. Oh, the Karkin and Exelus. So Hilkach, therefore, Lixizua, Inu, let them cut it. So now, when they cut it, Kehecha, the Lehevi Yush, Ba'olim, Biyodayu, Didu. So the first step of Yush, which does not yet make a transference, happens when it's still in their hands. And now you have the second step, which is they are selling it to you merchants. And therefore what? So let's go through both issues over here. Number one, if the issue is the lochem has to belong to you, it belongs to them. Don't forget that if the merchants are the ones that cut it, according to Rafuna that says that just yush is not enough, there was only Yush. There wasn't Shinu Rishus yet. From when it became a Taltalin, it's, it's in the hands of the ones that cut it. If the merchants will, will be the ones that are, if, if the buyers, if the merchants, if the Avankiris will be the ones that are cutting it. And if there won't be Shinu Rishus, then it's still going to belong to the owners of the land. Then you're lacking in the Lochem. So how do you resolve the issue of Lochem? You need for it to belong now to the merchants and then to the buyers of the merchants. 
Gavaldik, let let the goyim cut it. Now you have Yush, and now when the Avankiri buys it from them, you have the first transference of of Rishus. So now it's going to be the Lachem. Another point just to read inside the middle of Rashi, V'inami, and regarding the issue of Mitzvah Baba Veira, regarding the issue of Mitzvah Baba Veira, says Rashi, that if the merchants will be the ones cutting it, since it now became so to say, stolen, because beforehand, halachically, it was connected to the ground. So then, they did an Aveda. They didn't know, but they did an Aveda. You can't tell them not to cut it, Stam, maybe it's stolen. For Stam, you don't have to have a fear that it was stolen. But now, for the mitzvah, we are, we are upping the standards. A mitzvah bab Aveda. If the, if the Goyim cut it, they did the sin. Now that they sold it to these Avankiris, they did not do a sin. It's already removed. It's a step removed from the Aveda, so there's neither an issue of mitzvah baba Aveda. This is Gavaldik. So, and therefore, again, Rafuna, who dafke because he holds that Yush is not enough, let's focus, go back to the Lochem, told them, you merchants, you don't cut it, have the owners, which might not be owners, have them cut it and then sell it to you. Frek, the Gemara, I don't understand. Soif, soif, don't forget that merchants, the Avankiris, they're not using it. They're selling it further. So even if they're going to be the ones that are cutting it, let's say that now you have just the Yish, say that, but when they sell it to the final user, to the Yid that's going to use it for his Dalad Minim, now you'll have the Shina Rishus. So if so, if let the merchants cut it. You're right. Then you only begin with step number one. After it's no longer Karka, the Yush that happened a long time ago will now go into effect. And then they're selling it. The Shinoi Harashuz, Biyad Don. Biyad Don means in our hands, in the hands of the buyers, in the hands of the Yidden that are using it. So you're not going to have, not from the perspective of the final buyer, again, it's not Mitzvah Baba Veda, they didn't do any sin. And it's, and it's theirs. So the Gemara says, no, Rafuna understands that. But Rafuna is also aware that the Avankiris, the merchants who are hidden, they also used it for themselves. For, for the 99% that they're going to sell, there's no issue. But since they also use it for their own, Bemela, he told them, make sure you don't cut it, have the land owners or the land possessors, have them cut it and then sell it to you. Just to know the word Hoishana, just to make it clear, is referring to the bound Arba minim. In greater detail, we don't bind the four, we bind the three, Lulav and the Hadas and the Arava. And we call that Choshan and Chazal because it was held, as we do now, during the, the prayer known as the Choshanus. We really also hold it during the Halal to do the Na'anuyim. But we're going to learn a lot more about it later, but just it's good to be aware that a bound, a bundle, is called a Choshanah. So for the ones that they will keep for themselves, Based on the shita that holds that there's only a real um, ownership, that the original owner becomes depossessed only after both Yush and something else, then you, they won't have the something else. And the Gemara is going to not, not happy yet. Hold on. Uh, true, if they're going to keep it for themselves, there's no Shinu Rishus, but Shinu Rishus is not the only other thing that affects a transference of ownership. Frek the Gemara, number one. You are physically changing the Hadas. How are you physically changing it? Because that's the, the, the new topic that we also mentioned not that long ago, whether there's an obligation to bind the Lulav with the Hadas and the Arava. And let's say that we're going to follow the Shita. Now it's a bundle. Now you made it into a bundle. So you have Shinoi, you have Shinoi, you have, you have a Yush, and you have... And you have a Shinoi Maise. Oh, and that should affect, again, that should affect that it's, it is Lachem. Hold on, ask the Rishonim, I got it. Let's say if we're going to consider you putting the Hadas in a bundle as you, uh, you changed it, we're going to see that that's not exactly a change because you can unbundle it. But let's assume, as we have in the Havamina, that that's called a Shinoi Maise. So we resolved the Lachem. But hold on, what about Mitzvah Baba Veda? And the answer is, there are many, the answer that the David gives is that when you completely transform something, 
it's no longer going to be problematic because it's mitzvah habab aved. It's something new. It's something else. And we are looking at an item in a bundle, just like the Havamina is, is that this should be considered a Shinoi Maisa. This is considered something completely new. It's not even called, it's not even called a Hadas, it's called a Hoishana, it's called a bundle. Oh, that's the Kasha. So again, why is Rafuna insisting that the landowners should be the ones cutting it? Answers the Gemara, Kosova, number, I'll give you two reasons. Number one, I can argue that Rafuna Taka only said it because he holds that Lulav doesn't need to be bound. As we'll see, there is a Machlaikas. And even the Imtim Sulaimar that Rafuna subscribes that a Lulav does have to be bound, yet I'll explain to you that's not called a Shinoi Maisa. You know what? Because Shinoi Hachoiza Libri Yasayu, because any change that can be completely undone and a bundle can be unbundled and when it's unbundled the hadas will be exactly the way it was before even prior to it being unbundled it's not called something that underwent a physical change because shinoi hachoyze libriyosoi loi loi shmei shinoi and the final kasha is accepted it's not the shinoi maisa again according to rafuna it's yush and something else but a something else can be a change of name and here again, applying what the Ravid says, which is a Chiddush, and not only will that affect the transference of ownership, so it will be Lochem. So what's the problem? Why did the Rafuna say that, the, the, that the, the owner should be the ones cutting it, or the land, the possessor should be the ones cutting it? It's not even a problem of mitzvah habab aveda because it's something else. We are called Semites, right? They're the anti and we're the Semites. Shame. We talk, understand that God created with words. That we give value to the name. Shinoi Hashem is the biggest change. You gave a new name and it's, it has a different name. It's not called a Hadas, it's called a Arava. Right? Hashem. Because the Mikara Hadas in Aramish is called an Osa. Before it was called a Myrtle. And Vahashta Chavar will begin the Aleph. It's called a Hoishano. Answers the Gemara. Aha, here's the problem. That Meikara Namala Osa Hoishana Karola. I know that it's called a Hoishana, but you should know that when a Yid looks at a Hadas or at an Asa, when we look at something, we look at its purpose of creation. That's really the name. The name has two sides to it. it the name indicates where you came from, what's the Shredas of your Neshama. And like we also learned that Rav Meir, have a Medayik Bishma, that from a name you can understand someone's destiny or someone's mission. And since God created Asos or Hadassim for them to be used in the mitzvah of what we call in Chazal Hoishanas. So people already from the outset called it a Hoishana. So it never underwent a Shinoi Hashem. And therefore, for the Avankiris, for them, the Yidin, for them to be allowed to use the myrtles that they are really primarily selling, but for them to be allowed to use it and for it not to be not a problem with Lochem, nor a problem of Mitzvah Baba Veda, the solution will be is that those who are possessing the land, make sure that they are the ones that cut it and you buy it from them, God willing to be continued.